Hello. <laughs> Hola, buenas tardes. Muy buenas. To start off with, would you like to say your name and where you are? Yes. Um, my name is Eduardo Salvador, my surname, and I'm based in Barcelona, Spain. Mm -hmm. And so the first question, we'll see which part of you answers, whether it's the English or the Spanish part, but it's who are you as a human being? Who are you as a person? And that can be your values, qualities about yourself, passions. It's a quite a straightforward question from the very beginning. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if I've done the training, I should be able to give a quick answer and be uh, very good. So actually, uh, uh, I have this, uh, this situation by which partly I know who I am, partly I'm open to know who I am because... Uh, sometimes if I say what I am, some, uh, somehow I feel restricted by what I said, by my interjects or whatever you call it. And, uh, but I think that uh, I'm kind of, a, I try to be an open-minded person and uh, I'm, I, I think that's what describes me most, someone who is, uh, who is trying to understand and to connect, to build bridges. In my DNA, I think I have this uh, bridging aspect. And to build bridges among the uh, impossible, impossible cases. That is uh, my favorite one. So, <laughs> That's interesting. Impossible in the sense of, uh, but I think it's possible, but uh, the impossible, uh, you know, in principle, mm -hmm. the, the most difficult or, so uh, yes. So I think in Gestalt, we talk about connection. So for me, it is connecting also like uh, not only humans, but cultures and uh, different perspectives. At least I try. I'm not always capable. I try to be uh, uh, self-critical in the good sense of the word. Like um, try to philosophically uh, suspend my thinking about myself and things. So. But still, I have my personal values, and I think the values is very uh, values are very important. Uh, I think that uh, is connected maybe to our mission and to things that uh, that really resonate. That what resonates is connected to our values, I believe. So mm -hmm. we feel better, also more maybe in peace. Mm -hmm. Whenever. So, what are some of those values that you carry? Yeah. <clears throat> so. Um, no, if I if I would see the list, I would tell you this this and uh, these ones. But uh, I would uh, I would think something like um, authenticity, connection, um, like truth is a value. Somebody told me in a guest training, truth is not a kind of good value because you know truth is there is many truth there are many truths. So. <laughs> So maybe it's authenticity or, uh, as I said, uh, critical thinking, but uh, critical thinking also the politically correct things. So critical thinking is not just uh, following the lines that we are told, not only by the government, but even the whatever lines uh, you want to call it. I don't care about it. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Maybe so it's... Uh, a bit, I told you. So I resonate with this. Uh, sometimes I resonate with this idea of this anarchism of uh, Gestalt therapies. You know, on the other hand, I think, okay, that should be, you know, I also like to have something principles, something that I follow. So I'm not that anarchist, you know. But sometimes <laughs> I think that maybe in nature we are also in our nature a bit anarchists. Okay. So I, I'm sure I'll get to know a bit more about you with your other answers. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm also, I'm curious, and this is not, just to be clear, we talked about this before the recording started. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to underestimate your English, but I'm wondering, is there a word that you don't have in English that describes you in Spanish? Mm. So that we'd be jumping into Spanish, yeah? I'm just <clears throat> curious what comes up. A ver, en español, pues como soy. Lo primero que me viene es lo que me dicen, claro, o, o lo que me digo, ¿no? Entonces, bueno, volvería a lo mismo, o sea, es un poco 
como para mí es como, como hacer puentes, es una cosa que es como es mi esencia. Eh, enlazar mundos, hacer puentes. La, me vienen tópicos, ¿no? O sea, yo para poder contestar esto así de primera salida necesito nadar por determinados lugares, ¿sabes? Y no, sí, ir cogiendo sí, sí, confianza porque, porque me parece tan importante la pregunta que es que no me gustaría, ¿no? O sea, que más así a, a bote pronto no me sale mucho, o sea... Perfecto. Me sale, te diría original, bueno, te diría... Yo qué sé... No sé, intimidad. O... Un poco los valores de, lo, los de, de comunicación no violenta, no sé si estás familiarizada. Un poco mm. me, me, me resuenan bastante. Pero bueno, también tenemos nuestra parte agresiva, ¿no? Entonces, como que bueno. Sí, un anarquista que se comunica de manera no violenta. Intenta, por lo menos. <risa> cuando, es, cuando es posible, porque parece que no siempre es posible hacerlo, ¿no? <risa> ok. So, whichever you want, we can go back to English, is fine. Um, I'm curious, what event or set of circumstances from your life you would mm. say has really influenced you or shaped you in some way? Mm. Of course, the, the uh, difficult circumstances uh, force, force us to, to think and to make big changes. So, I... Instead of saying, okay, in, but I would say, allow me to say in negative, maybe it is also my, my uh, background in psychology, the thinking that trauma, that's what opens, you know, there's also this uh, the traumatic growth. And I, I, I strongly believe that the traumatic growth is something very positive. So I would say that uh, after my first uh, divorce, there's no second, but my, my divorce, so it forced me to, when I was so lost to get too close to things that would uh, resonate. And uh, I had something, although I think in the history of my family, they are kind of uh, structured in a way. And, uh, but on the other hand, I have a, regardless of the fact that I've studied uh, certain things and, uh, and I have this, uh, I don't reject the mind. You know, sometimes in Gestalt therapy, they say, okay, you're too much in the mind. Uh, I'm not, uh, I, I don't think, I, I, I allow me just to, to say that sometimes those that say you're too much in your mind are those who are not capable of being, you know, uh, in a sophisticated way in the mind. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, what I would say is that I have a body, uh, I have a, my body talks. You know, there is a book, you know, the body doesn't lie or something, yeah? It's not gestalt therapy, but it's... Uh, so my body talks in a way that uh, when there is a job, <laughs> there we have a, a neighbor that is uh, complaining. And uh, when I had a job offer, for instance, uh, that I was looking for it, and suddenly, you know, my body did not allow me to, do, to get that job. Believe it, believe it or not, you know, it is, I cannot just do it. But it's... I, my mind wants, my body doesn't allow me. So I think I do have this alarm in my body and I don't, I cannot explain. I don't know if it happens to you too or not. Does it happen? I'm not the uh, hybrid the kind of <laughs> creature. No, sorry, the dogs agree with you as well, but <laughs> I, I, I liked what you said about the mind is not simple and getting out of it isn't a goal for me either. Right. Yes, because I think uh, it was my initial goal, goal because well, I was studying a PhD in economics and so on. So I moved uh, a little bit out of, of this. I rejected the uh, you know, scientific method and uh, whatever you call it, you know, everything. But uh, on the other hand, I realized, you know, just let's not be stupid and, or let's uh, admit, honor also the capacities and this uh, possibility to contribute uh, by means of this which does not mean that I would that I would like to do for instance if I were a trainer I would give a theoretical no that's enough that's another thing very much different so that's the how but I'm still curious about the what if there is an event even if it's a traumatic event or if it's not or if there's just a, a 
part of your circumstances of life that you would say hmm. it keeps coming back you know you can't avoid having come out of that piece or that context so you asked me about events that have uh, approached yeah. me to gestalt therapy that's no I mean. not to gestalt therapy that's made you who you are oh. that, as a person yeah. yes uh, firstly what would be my school uh, it was a conservative school so it made me uh, radical, I think, sometimes against the school, but sometimes in favor. So uh, the question is that I had to be somewhere, you know, just critical. So, uh, of course, my family, in a way, the way how they, uh, how they are, their vision, my grandmother, I would say, she was a, she was a very smart lady and uh, she spoke many languages. She had traveled and she was uh, she never married she's a uh, lone kind of without husband uh, rose uh, my mother and uh, what else other events and then uh, what other events well my first trip when i when i lived in uh, southeast asia for a couple of years so it was an opening but i i've, I've had a series of events i think the traveling the traveling has been what has opened my mind and who has, uh, what has uh, allowed me to see myself from other perspectives to get to know myself. So, so I think that that's, that's what, I, what has been the key for each of the countries I've been to. Um, and I don't want to sound like a, you know, like a traveler, but it's my reality. I'm sorry if, uh, I have to say if I say this, but uh, in each of the countries I have been to, have, I have developed something new. So first, like the stage, maybe the language would open the door. And, uh, certain th in Southeast Asia, certain way of see uh, seeing things and very uh, soft, and the capacity to say whatever you want without hurting the other. That is uh, a massage, mental massage. That's what in Indonesia they are good at. And uh, well, others somehow in the good sense of the word diplomacy sometimes, because you know, I was a very, not rough, but aggressive when I was young. I think I was uh, aggressive in, in my words. So I was disturbing other people by what I was saying. And I did not know why or how. So my, my path was, you know, just to go through uh, uh, around the world and try to maybe to, uh, to get to go back to myself and uh, you know the, be more connected because in fact I, uh, that is what gives us peace when we are uh, uh, connected with the other and we can enjoy it. we can even fight sometimes. Okay, so about a different part of yourself, um, mm -hmm. I'm curious how through these processes. Mm -hmm. You have come to experience and understand yourself mm -hmm. within your gender or masculinity or as a man mm -hmm. or however mm -hmm. you would phrase it. Yes. Well, that's a big issue, actually, because uh, it's currently quite a big issue, you know, throughout the world. And um, I've lived in Arab countries um, as well. So... Uh, in, the southern, in, in Spain too, which was supposedly kind of a chauvinist, male chauvinistic country. And I think that from, from my birth, I was a fairly uh, non-male chauvinist and, uh, and um, I hated uh, this in, even now, the role that uh, I am expected to have, like uh, not only provider, but also the defender and this kind of things. You know, it's something that you know, for me, it's exhausting. So um, I think that the emancipation of the women, if it's possible, if it has come or whatever, I think it helps us a lot, helps me a lot. And I like that. I like uh, uh, women or whatever now we call many, uh, we talk about many different uh, gender types and so on, which is not always easy, <laughs> you know, to, to be able to, to, uh, to have a good communication with, because there are so many small details that one misses. That, uh, but I think that uh, with common sense and with love, we can understand that we can make mistakes or not.
I don't know if I answered your question. But I, I, I will tell you, I'm not politically with the politically correct thing. No. So um, I'm not into, I've tried and I've been, I've been in the polyamory a little bit. I've been in this other thing. So I try to open and open for, for many things. Other, another thing is to be able to go through some of them. But uh, of course, different genders, uh, most important is respect, which is, and sometimes it, uh, you know, uh, touches us when we see someone doing something, you know, it touches us, we don't, and then maybe that's why we become sometimes uh, phobic because, um, but, uh, well, I think uh, if we can solve this issue, I hope it can be also solve other as or more important issues such as the poverty in the world, things that are maybe more, you know, and, and, and worse. I think these are big issues that are as or more important, yes. So you've, you've talked a bit about, you know, a then and now and an evolution. So mm -hmm. I'm curious about your age, how you're experiencing yourself at this age and the aging process. Yeah, it's a very interesting uh, question too, because uh, in my family, they take pride on the looking young and the, in the youth and the importance of the, and uh, we all uh, maybe look a bit younger, I don't know. And uh, we are quite transgenerational, meaning that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do at my age as any Gestalt therapist, I suppose. <laughs> And I don't intend to be doing Yeah, that. I've noticed either. nobody's really, you know, acting their age. No, not at all, you know. And uh, yes, absolutely. So that's what joins us in a way uh, and makes us, uh, you know, thank you for raising that because then I feel now I am experiencing some peace coming from this uh, top part of my lungs and, uh, you know, which shows uh, that uh, some sort of connection and uh, validation maybe. You know, I don't know, or inter or a similar thinking. So yeah, I don't intend to do what, what uh, I'm supposed to. Yeah, you know, I'm going to tell you just a small um, anecdote. I remember uh, when I got married at the age of 28, I went to Armenia, and I do I, I participated in a social project with uh, orphans, and uh, one of my colleagues from Armenia, 95 was 24. So with him, we were playing guitar and, you know, every day he was having fun with me, you know. And then the last day before I was leaving the project, he asked me, well, how old are you? And I said, well, I'm 28. The guy looked down saying, oh my God, he's 28. You know, I'm 24 and I'm playing with him, you know, as though he's, uh, you know, like younger in a way or, so yes, I think that uh, I have this. Uh, I don't mean to be uh, hijacking the role of the young people. I don't mean to be, you know, playing young as such. I just want to be have access to everybody and you know, whoever, you know, if possible, and if uh, you know, if they want. When I'm walking, I do like a, a pilgrimage, in, you know. Uh, Santiago de Compostela in North Spain. And my objective is, I say, sometimes I say, okay, I'm going to talk to everybody, you know, old women, men, German, whatever. And, you know, so uh, a little bit with everybody. So uh, I think this is part of the bridging, you know, like, uh, like uh, making connections and uh, helping, you know, contributing to that. I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah. Yeah, it's just sort of where are you with age? And that yeah. seems like a, a good answer. Mm. So another thing that I'm curious about, and I think you've touched on it a little bit, is how you experience and understand power and privilege in your life. Hmm. Yes, that's, a, that's quite a good point. Yes, sometimes we are not aware when we are exerting power or where we are, where, when we are exerted power on us when we are so, we, uh, so uh, yeah uh, and privilege yes as well it's uh, it's not only about gender but it's uh, racism in the cases of uh, so how 
it's difficult to be aware of if we are not have not uh, suffered it. And somehow, mm, in a way or another, I think that all of us have suffered some sort of uh, lack of privileges in different spheres of our lives. The question is whether uh, we have uh, developed awareness and consciousness about, about this and uh, whether we can extrapolate to other cases. And uh, well, yes, indeed, there. I'm not, uh, you know, uh, the idea of okay, I'm a white, you know, this kind of uh, think, thinking. Maybe it's too cliche for me. I mean, I, I mean to be more original than just repeating the official thing. And it, I, 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 um, I think we, we can go f further than that. And uh, I think that uh, as we are not a polarity, we are. Uh, my flatmate is a philosopher, and we have lots of discussions about um, Hegel, for instance, talks about the paradox of the uh, owner and the amo y el esclavo and the slave. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, although maybe Hegel has been sometimes taken as Marxist or, uh, or also as bourgeois, whatever, regardless of this, I do like this idea that the the master has power. Well, it's unclear how much power the master officially has power. They exert oppression, yes. But the uh, oppressed has more power than what uh, he or she thinks. So, uh, so that's what I reflect on because things are not as obvious as uh, direct, you know. Violence is a, it's an overall, it's not just direct violence as uh, the uh, theoretician of violence said. Uh, Galtung, Johann Galtung, I don't know if you, you've met him or you've heard of him, but he's the father of the peace studies. And, uh, you know, we have a direct structural and cultural violence. So um, I think, and uh, equally, we have this Karpman triangle in which we have the perpetrator, we have the savior and we have the victim. So, the, and we have the oppressor and the oppressed. But you know the oppressor and the, the oppressed sometimes it's it's placed on the oppressor's place and, the, and the, equally with the triangle and I don't want I don't mean to to accuse or to not to admit that there has there is an oppression for instance like in Afghanistan clearly it's going on and uh, many Arabic countries and uh, and different ways in our countries too but uh, I think that we need to to clarify, privilege means something here and in these times with this uh, family connection, with this uh, money uh, background, with this, so it's different, it changes. So yeah. it's a taxonomy, it's taxonomy, uh, mm -hmm. yes, it's a taxonomy of uh, a matrix, a matrix mm -hmm. of uh, situations. And uh, yeah, that's how, I don't know if I responded. Uh, to yeah. your, uh, no, I mean, it, it sort of tells me a bit about how and where you see privilege mm. and, and power. Mm. I'm just curious if there's, what do you do with money, it in your money, life? <laughs> money, yes, money gives a lot of privilege and power. That's, uh, that is in the very background of everything. And, uh, and what about yourself? I mean, what is your relationship to power or privilege? Do you have? Yeah. Um, I actually work for the unprivileged, you know, and then uh, I work for uh, refugees and migrants. So uh, my and in my, in addition to this, in my travels, I've had the privilege to be told that I was quite a horizontal person. So I always tried, and it's also in my family that uh, we have probably pri privileges. But uh, at least in our speech, now the way how we interact, uh, we are, uh, I think I have lots of uh, difficulties and limitations, but the seeking at least to, to, con to build something. And I, I'm, I'm very, what can I say? I can give you an example. The, um, the other day I was in a restaurant, in an African restaurant that I starting to go Barcelona. And uh, I saw uh, someone who, you know, talking about uh, from 
from Spain who was talking about Af Africa. Oh, I've done so many trips in Africa and so on. So, um, so well, uh, and there are some other Africans. So I'm, I'm uh, in this sense, I, I don't, I, I'm learning to, to be aware that what I say, you know, carries certain importance and then I should take into account the other person's also uh, experience in life and the possibilities, economic possibilities. So as not to, uh, you know, just to, what can I say, make myself bigger. And uh, so I tend to, my part of my, you, you talked about my values in a way, I, I like to think that I can give back the um, what do you say? dignity, the dignity. And uh, in my job, as I'm a bit small coach, so I, I recuperate all the uh, capacities of, uh, of the people. I'm like in the more connected to the labor uh, aspect. So I recuperate and I do like a, a study of, uh, of, of their working uh, capacities and competencies and possibilities of the person. And, I, and that really makes, motivates me. And in a way, uh, so privilege, what is privilege there? Well, I have the privilege to work with them. I have the privilege uh, in, in the positive sense of, of the word. So, Maybe it's a cliche, but uh, in since I was in a studying in a privileged school, I had said to myself, "Well, I want that. I would like that uh, everything you know I gain in my studies that it can be for the benefit, and uh, well, I can contribute because when you never know we can contribute or not. It's clear. It's up to the other person. It, we can control." Uh, what contribute well, but it's, to the other but it's the intention right not mm -hmm. just to accumulate more but also mm -hmm. to give back mm -hmm. yeah hmm. interesting so now i will ask you um how did you meet gestalt where did this cross your path mm -hmm. right so uh it was a um... I'm trying to think the uh, which one was it, but I remember the ah, yes, I no, no, I remember, yes, because uh, in fact, the uh, Gestalt, yes, I am originally in, in international aid worker, yeah, so uh, so I had been in situations that uh, surpassed me, me sobrepasaron. So, uh, and connected to other, as I told you, divorce and situations in a former, Yugos former Yugoslavia, yes. And then, um, so I was not prepared to hear things, to see certain things, to participate in certain activities. And uh, so when I came back to Spain, which I didn't want to, because I, I, I like traveling and so on, but I, I realized that I needed to, to to stop somewhere. And then I started in a group, uh, which was a, a humanistic uh, emotional education. And then that was the first time that uh, while I started to, to feel, re uh, to resonate a lot. And to start to, it was like very healing. So that was my first touch with humanistic uh, things, and then that took me to um, to emotion to emotional education. And from emotional education, I um, I developed uh, one workshop about theater, like theater and emotional education, and and then what well, this catharsis kind of things and all these uh, post these. Uh, difficulties or these possibilities arose. So I thought, well, maybe I would take something therapeutic because emotional education uh, to a certain extent looked to me that it was a bit more superficial and I wanted to go deeper. So I approached uh, the first school that would do theater and uh, gestalt therapy. And at the same time, theater was a very much uh, opening for me I'm uh, in my first studies economist. So uh, when I was doing the first time theater, you know, I, opened, I, I, I could experience again in my body 
so lots of things that I would not uh, so it was a, a way for me to to move on because I, uh, no books no therapies maybe nothing would help you know just need to go through a certain process and have a, and tener confianza have you know confidence with the with mm-hmm. the with the core f- facilitator maybe, mm-hmm. that uh, would care about me you know so through humanistic process and through theater yeah and so what did you find when you got into Gestalt itself? What I found is a, is a, not only a methodology, but also a, a place to start uh, to, to learn how to express myself, to, uh, to hear someone else's stories, you know, deep stories, and, uh, and to see that I'm not as weird as I thought. You know, all things that I happen to my mind, you know, sometimes I think, okay, I'm a horrible person because I'm thinking this. <laughs> like, and in theater, I start, yes, but you know, in the past, when you're in a politically correct play, uh, world, you know, you, you know you're, you're not used to. So, uh, you know, so it, that's what, uh, you know, my first step was is theater people, you know, they're just uh, wild in a way, so it was a perfect place to let go, to be validated by what, whatever happens to me, others, you know. And uh, yes, and Gestalt therapy training. So uh, I first did uh, something, uh, not Gestalt therapy, but something similar in the very same school, which was a uh, group processing and game, like a drama and, uh, and, uh, training through, it's called Ludo Formacion. It's a training with like a Ludico, but with Gestalt trainers, yeah, for three years. So that was uh, something again was good, but I thought, okay, in one of the other tr- sessions, I realized, look, I think I, I can be a good therapist, you know, as somebody told me. And uh, we know. And then I said, okay, let's go uh, again, continue. And, uh, I, and, uh, in addition to uh, what I told you about uh, emotional education, I thought that uh, gestalt therapy would be would give a like a deep understanding, would give a certain other uh, coordin- coordinates in order to manage like a training of f- theater therapy. Yes, that's that was my intention in those times. And so what have you done with Gestalt and with all of these other elements? I mean, economy mm-hmm. and human rights work. You have a lot of, uh, I've a done lot all of sorts interesting of tools. Yeah. All but sorts what would of you say is the essence of your work? Now, I think is the transcendence of human rights into something more, uh, more human than rights. What does that mean? That means that uh, my uh, and, uh, and, uh, because I, uh, I don't want to, you know, uh, human rights uh, uh, sometimes when I see what happen, what can I say? I would like to go to the essence of human rights. And I think the essence of human rights is something that is not uh, about human rights, officially, yes. And that's what that's what my trainings are go, are, are developing. We are gestalt therapists. We are like not pioneers. Pioneers is not the word, but, but we like to develop new uh, experiences. So how do you experience human rights? It's like well, it's difficult to you know. But yes, the idea is to experience the human rights, but from not from the word human rights from the from the uh, necessarily the. Um, from a different way that it's being done. Because sometimes I think that uh, if we use the separation and polarization, I think that it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not my world. I'm sorry about those who believe that uh, there is the bad and the good one, and I am the good, he is the bad, or she is the bad, and then uh, I develop an ideology, and then uh, we differ. No. Human rights, uh, it's been so prostituted, human rights too, that uh, I 
and also um, I can use it to channel my rage, my traumas and whatever. And so I think we need a lot of therapy to understand the, what the values, thank you, because uh, the value of the human rights, the essence of the human rights, because it represents lots of, the, of our human values. And, uh, and you know that in the Southeast Asia and uh, other countries, they have other uh, understanding of human rights or they stress. No, no they're not, not always Western yes, values. Uh, there are different yeah. social systems with different value yeah, structures. Yes. And then, uh, yeah, so uh, I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm also, you know, curious, like what shape your projects are taking or if you work with particular communities these days? Well, uh, I have like two main, so to speak, communities. I have uh, these uh, refugees, as I told you, uh, or, or I have also uh, some cases of uh, coach, uh, like a uh, coaching or therapy. And, uh, and also training. So training, uh, at this moment, I am doing uh, um, human rights training and, uh, and uh, gestalt therapy and ethics. So that is, the, that is uh, something that I am doing uh, currently. And that's what I'm trying to, to explore. How can we go into the human rights without using the word human rights or without thinking of uh, necessarily of maybe a demonstration is something good but you know I don't know how how can we be out of the box and uh, connect with something uh, further further than the polarity of the good bad okay and what about yourself within a gestalt community. Does hmm. that phrase mean anything? Do you feel connected to a gestalt community or what is that for you? Yes, and I've been at times uh, closer to the gestalt community and many gestalt communities. And, uh, and at this moment, I feel a certain distance, but I'm still inserted. I belong to one of the committees of human rights again, uh, the European Association of Gestalt Therapy. And uh, I belong to the Spanish Association of uh, Gestalt Therapy for the time being. And uh, I, I was part of the social committee of the, uh, of the Spanish uh, Gestalt Association of, uh, for Gestalt Therapy. I like to participate in some, in some in the congresses uh, like every two or four years. So it's, uh, it has been, quite encouraging or it has been curious to see people from so many other countries that they share the values and in the in, in, and uh, it's something that unites us and uh, again it's a form of bridge and um, yes from the Spanish community Barcelona or Catalonian etc so I'm not so connected so so much in fact uh, I, um, I joined this uh, human rights committee because um, I was uh, linked to one NGO called Peace Brigades International. And they do a lot of work in Mexico, by the way, I don't know if you have seen them. And um, they also do work in other Latin American countries. And it's a group of peace workers that uh, they tend, tend to follow uh, and monitor uh, peace and human rights, so to speak, uh, briefly. And I was quite, uh, I admired this, as a, this organization. I have friends who have been there. I was a volunteer nationally. So when I heard that the European Association for Gestalt Therapy was, uh, was uh, had a project with them, that was uh, the first time I went to Krakow to the, uh, conference uh, European Association and then I got to know this committee I was invited to enter and then uh, it opened a new door for me which was uh, also handling a platform so uh, one of the things another thing that I do is uh, it takes me a lot of time and uh, it's my seventh year or eighth year that I handle an online platform of Gestalt therapies, European Gestalt therapies, 
for crisis situations like uh, like uh, Greek islands and uh, refugees, but now it's for all crisis. So yeah, we have like three, five, sorry, four or five associations who request uh, therapies. And, you know, um, it's great that I am providing these services. You know, we are providing these services that for free for, uh, for volunteers mainly. And uh, in case of Peace Brigades International, they have a certain contract and with these other associations too. So uh, that uh, I am linked with the Gestalt world, mainly through human rights. But as I said, um, you know, I, I, I sometimes I'm saying, okay, I'm gonna get away from him. You know, I'm just fed up with the, you know, it doesn't resonate, I don't resonate. So then I'm coming back and you know, back and forth. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I can I can see the bridge building though. I can see yeah, that yeah. what you mean. Yes. So what aside from human rights not quite fitting anymore what are some of the challenges that you run up against in your work as a person i mean what what has been difficult for you to process or to work through on any level as a not as a therapist as a person well as a therapist as a person as someone in an organization i mean what are the challenges that you have run into in the past, uh, I can say that, uh, I, as I said before, it was to uh, provide a certain communication that would be uh, connecting. It was a big challenge for me uh, to be able to speak and not to raise uh, bad emotions <laughs> on people. So uh, I think it was part of my traveling through other worlds. So I, I, may, I may have become a diplomatic <laughs> person but and I, I still think uh, that uh, the communication and um, it has lots of uh, possibilities and the, and the non-communication too so uh, so I think that the big challenge is this to to be connected to myself not to be lost in the other's uh, wishes or expectations so this is the, the great challenge not to lose myself because I want to Agradador, no? I want to. Yes, you want to be liked. Mm -hmm. Liked or loved. So I think this this is my like late, my last step is to 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 be able to communicate even if I'm not liked by or think that I'm not liked. Sometimes it's my fantasy that thinks that the other person will not like it. That's one of the marvelous words of this therapy, West Coast. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's interesting because you can make people uncomfortable and still be liked. And sometimes they will even like yeah. you because you make them uncomfortable, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So it's, this not, is, it's not always, yeah. you know, discomfort is the same as rejection. Yes. And then we take a risk or we learn just by learn being ourselves in a certain, you know, because we can exaggerate things or, but at least certain, I think also we are better known because uh, sometimes we, we, we want to be liked. We, we are, they don't know who we are. That's true, that's true. So what comes to mind for you as an experience of satisfaction, either in the Gestalt world or within your work, or if you really find satisfaction somewhere else, what is that like for you? The first thing that uh, the image that has, it's strange because I, I think I like more mountains than sea, but it came a swimming pool. So something that is giving a lot of satisfaction to me is what I'm doing after this uh, pilgrimage. And it's I'm running, I'm going to the beach, I'm healing my, my shoulder, you know, for the first time in so many years that I could not move my, but you see, like Wayne Dyer's film, I don't know if you've seen Wayne Dyer's film. No, but and, okay, you know that he's moving his leg, so I'm moving, you know, so much thanks to this. Uh, so it's giving a lot of satisfaction to to have this strength uh, in, in in the morning, and to to run and to swim, and to to be open. So that's uh, yeah. I could go to the stereotype, you know, connection with people or traveling and so on. But uh, 
it's fine. <laughs> it's cliches and uh, it can course. be like an immediate, very felt satisfaction. That's interesting. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm. So, how would you say that your involvement with the Gestalt world, you know, on any level, as a trainer, as a therapist, as a student, how has Gestalt affected you as a person? Yeah. As I said, uh, although I criticize uh, this thing that you're too much in your mind, I think it has, uh, in a way, I think it has developed a, a sort of emotional aspect of myself. It has uh, given my, the capacity and validated my, the possibility to express and the importance to, to express uh, myself and uh, the point of expressing myself. And it helps, it helped me at all, at all levels. At, uh, in in in, uh, in relationship at work, uh, of course we cannot go to the boss in a big meeting and say I'm feeling at this moment. Of course we, we cannot do do this maybe, but uh, there's always a possibility and uh, this this emotional intelligence. I think it has raised uh, truly emotional intelligence. My brother-in-law is an expert in emotional intelligence. You know, from a U.S. University, he's a he's a professor, and uh, in in his last uh, workshop that I that uh, I have, that I helped facilitate with some Russian students, so he said something very interesting. They asked him, "How do you develop emotional intelligence?" And he was talking a lot about uh, conflict resolution. In a way, he said, "You know, in every single small thing in your life." It's a chance to develop your emotional intelligence. I think uh, I don't want to be a, like paranoid, like Gestalt, you know, it's the best and whatever. But, you know, in any small details in our life, it's an opportunity to develop this awareness to uh, uh, not to be plastic, you know, because sometimes we are like so much, you know, into this and then we, um, but maybe it's what we need at that moment with who we are. Losing yourself. Yeah. Yes. So all, uh, every 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 small moment of uh, unhappiness or dissatisfaction, mm, it's a possibility. It's a it's a great chance to explore and uh, to move move forward and to get to uh, maybe another level or to you know open something. Yes. So speaking. Speaking of moving forward, that's, I mean, that's really my last question is where are you going from here? Where do you see yourself or your work going? And where do you think Gestalt is going next? Gestalt as a, Gestalt, therapy, gestalt, as a, gestalt as a whole. I personally don't see it, you know, staying mm -hmm. in little individual consulting rooms. It yes. seems to be getting a little mm -hmm. bit more movement, but I don't know what your perspective is. Um, I am not sure, but uh, I, I tend to be, you know, in the experience and see, and uh, and I I still see myself somewhere uh, going, still uh, moving to other places, and uh, and and there uh, finding uh, new possibilities for. Uh, you know, theater has been something uh, that has accompanied me in throughout my life. So, uh, especially from, uh, it was just before all this uh, therapeutic and, and so, so I think that uh, I see myself uh, coming back a little bit to this theater issue. And, uh, and I think Gestalt is, uh, is a perfect, uh, yeah. way to give us a, uh, because when you are facilitating uh, drama, drama therapy, things that can have a therapeutic aspect, it's not easy to handle. And so, uh, so I think that all this process that we are undergoing gives us a uh, certain, uh, you know, as I said, uh, limitations or possibilities. So, uh, so I see myself developing these aspects. I do like, for instance, a lot, for instance, languages. So um, I don't know. I don't know. It's in the, one, one of my 
my dreams would be like to set up a school of languages using theater and maybe therapy. So, uh, so that was that can steal my idea, whoever, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they'd have to have the skills to put that together. So I don't know who can steal that. I don't know, I'm saying, I'm saying this to the world to see yes. whether it's possible. Well, maybe instead of stealing it, maybe they'll come and sign up for it. Maybe it would work that way. It's okay. I'm a, I think that things when they uh, come is because, uh, you know, maybe, they, maybe it's a new age thinking, but uh, they have to, that's the moment that they, that they come. That's true. Hmm. Hmm. So would you add anything at this point? Do you think there's any significant piece of yourself that's been left out? Or Well, uh, I don't. I don't know much uh, what to say. I didn't talk about, a lot about uh, gestalt therapy as such, but I, I, I am thankful uh, to the gestalt therapy because uh, it has given me the chance to get to know myself, to be in peace, to learn how to, you know, something. I the, the word expression. It's an. I learned in Mexico, by the way, because I was in a, in the Aguascalientes in an exchange program between Barcelona and Mexico. And uh, the trainer there, his top therapist, told me something that I use with his permission in, in many other trainings. He said, the word expression comes from two words, expression. So X is to take out, impression is something that is under pressure. So uh, the importance of to express is because there is a pressure inside and needs to go out. So, uh, so it has been a great opportunity to allow me to get all this pressure that I was having and to learn how to, how to do it, to meet a lot of people worldwide. I have been in New York, I have been in uh, many other places and uh, in like in Poland and I've met uh, so many people from the uh, gestalt therapy world it allowed me to connect uh, and uh, to discuss and to have a to have a like a platform of people who who also have uh, 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 this uh, this uh, intention to to do something also socially I think I like to think I don't know we can not force this idea but. Uh, I like to think that from our origins, from the origins of gestalt therapy, wherever it comes from, because there's so many people around. And <laughs> so I like to think that there is a social content in it, because otherwise I'm not interested. Yeah, I got that impression from what you <laughs> yes. so. Nice, interesting. Yes. So is it okay for you if we leave this here for now? It's been really interesting to get to know you. I'm curious. Yeah. I feel like we could have a longer conversation. But yes. No, no, I'm fine. Is this an I'm okay fine. place? Uh, I'm not used to being asked so much. You know, I'm more, more <laughs> yeah. used to asking questions. So yes, uh, people try to give it back sometimes. <laughs> it's like, no, no. No, to ask you for, for I know for, for you, but anyway. So I thank <laughs> you for this opportunity to to talk about all these aspects about myself. I hope it can be useful for whoever listens to it. And if I, it has been boring, maybe, you know, I was going to say, maybe, maybe you can look at it. I'm not of that type saying, okay, revise your uh, whatever. No, but I can be boring too. You know, I should allow myself to be boring. No, I didn't find it boring at all. So thank you. <laughs> thank you.